Hi, my name is Dan. This is my shop. And if you're new to this channel, our channel is all about model airplanes. We are building, we are flying, we are repairing. God, I hope I don't have to repair that much, but you know, it's part of the hobby. If you're flying model airplanes, you're definitely maintaining and repairing them. But anyways, uh, if you are new here, I encourage you, please hit that subscribe button down below and uh, hit the little bell thing. i will notify you every time that we make a new video. It is a we kind of a deal, right, Kitty? And uh, so today I wanted to talk to you about something that, um, well, it's, we've, we've hit a mile mark. I mean, we went past the 1,000. We're now at about 1,300 viewers at this point, which is great. It means that we now have the community page, which will be kind of, I'll be putting, uh, posting information that's more kind of like off the cuff kind of stuff. It takes a while to put these videos together. I mean, when you shoot a video, you need the time to do it, then you need to edit it, then, you know, there's other little touches like the music and the transitions from scene to scene and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, but luckily Kitty here is a wizard at getting that kind of stuff done. Uh, but it still takes a while. So with the community page, I'll be able to reach out to you with other things, you know, like if there's a brief article, like uh, for instance, right now I'm really interested in what's gonna happen with the FAA and the drone ID um, ruling that's coming up here, because it's really gonna affect our hobby if we're not able to fly the planes without strapping a uh, international friend or foe type uh, transmitter into our airplanes as we're flying them in our little spaces. So there's topics like that that are coming up, I think are important. But uh, anyways, today, what I wanted to talk about is, you know, with having 1300 uh, viewers, we're getting plenty of comments and I'll tell you, I really love the comments that we have. There are so many things that we've been talking about, but I wanted to kind of uh, put together the five most commonly asked questions. And I think part of it is that maybe you can't see the comments. I try to put links to everything that I'm using in my uh, posts, in the uh, actual videos that we're shooting, uh, so that you'll have the ability to go and find it if you need it. But I'm finding that in some places, maybe you can't see the comment section, or the, uh, not the comment section, the description section that's right down below the video. So if you can't, what I wanted to do today is I will give you the five most commonly asked questions that we get on, the, on those comments. And um, I wanna put them on the screen, actually, so that you'll see them there. I don't think it'll be a clickable link. I don't know how to do that kind of stuff, but I'll put the name of where it is so that you could find, you know, there's certain things like, uh, well, for instance, the plans and, uh, you know, some of the building materials and also like the tools that we use. Um, constantly getting questions. And so I'd like to try to answer as many of those so you could find them yourself. And so let's start with uh, the number one question is where's Kitty? Yeah, it, here she is right here. She's so happy to be here. By the way, uh, a lot of you like having her, you like seeing her in the videos and stuff, and she's so happy to have her own fan base, right? Yeah, she's just gonna sit here. She just loves sitting in this. It, she gets all excited when I get the camera out because she knows that uh, I'm gonna be sitting here and she'll be able to just do what cats do, which is, what, look good, I guess. So anyways, uh, number one question that we have is where can you get the plans? for the Ryan's Rebel. And you can get the plans from a place called aerofred.com. Uh, that's a site that has thousands of airplane plans on it. So if you're looking for something specific, besides, you know, the Rebels plans are there, but there are a ton of other ones and you might wanna just go there and check it out and see if there's something else that you're interested in. Uh, you can find the plans for the Rebel. They're, they've got like three different copies of it. One of them is the actual article that was in the RCM magazine back in 2000. I think this was in 2003. Um, RCM magazine article. So that will give you kind of some instructions on how to build this plan. Then there's an actual copy of the plan from that magazine, but it's so blown up and been copied over so many times. It's very hard to read and everything is pretty fuzzy. But additionally, somebody also provided the AutoCADed version of these plans, which is uh, redone on computer. The lines are very concise and thin. It's, it's perfect. So you can build off of that AutoCADed plan 
and then you can go ahead and uh, use the instruction sheet with it and everything will be copacetic. So the dimensions of everything is exactly the same on the AutoCAD plan as they are on the uh, one that was originally in the magazine. It'll work perfect for you. When it comes to actually taking the file down, you'll be able to download it. Oh, first of all, you have to register at aerofred.com. It doesn't cost anything, and many of the different plans that you can download are free, like the Rebel plans. That's where I got them off of so that I could, I tested it out to make sure that you could get them free from there as well. So you can download them, and then you can get this file. It's a PDF file, I believe, and you could take it to a store like uh, Staples or any place where they have a large format copy machine. Uh, those are the kind of machines where they're doing blueprints and things like that. Uh, so if you know of a place where you have a contractor friend or somebody who is uh, doing houses and they have to have copies of the plans made, ask them where they get it done because that's the kind of place where you could get the size print you need for uh, printing your uh, airplane plans out. You could do it piece by piece. In other words, taking sheet one, glue to sheet, or tape to sheet two and all that. I'm sure you could do it that way. I don't think that'd be very fun though. I think it'd be better if you could just put it into one big giant sheet of paper and, and get it all done. Uh, one of the questions about the plans that I get is when you take it to a Staples place, um, do they have to scale it up or down? And the plans that are on that AeroFred are set to scale. So one inch equals one inch. So when they get that file and put it in their computer at Staples, it's gonna tell them how big of a sheet of paper it's gonna need. It's not like you need to scale it up or down. If you wanted to make a smaller version of this one or a larger version, you could of course have them increase the scale, but it's currently set at the actual dimensions of that airplane that the designer had drawn. So that's one thing that, uh, that's one thing that I also get a lot of questions about is, you know, do you have to have them scale it up or down? And no, that file is set right to scale. Next question we get is where do you get the pins? Uh, those little, where are they? I got them out here. Oh, here they are. There's one now. These pins here that uh, I used in uh, sticking the wing together, holding sheeting down uh, onto the ribs as the glue was drying. Um, these pins, are not available from where I found them originally. I bought these like, oh God, it's been about 10 years, I guess. Uh, they came from a place, oh, I don't even know what it was. I think it was called Hobby Horse, and I don't know that they're in business anymore, and I don't know that they're selling airplane stuff if they are in business anymore. But uh, I did find another place where you can get them. It's called Balsa Cabin. It's in England, and I'll put the, once again, I'll put the, uh, uh, the website on here so that you can find them. I think I've got a link that'll take you directly to them. Uh, but it, it looks like an exact match of these pins. They're in different colors than this goofy green. But um, I'll put that on there. And that's the number two question that we tend to get. The number three question is about the magnets. And I'll go ahead, I, I get the magnets. I found a place where you can get them on Amazon. These are not the place where I bought mine from. Once again, that was 10, 15 years ago. Um, but but then again, it might be because so many stores have gone over to Amazon now. This might be the same exact thing except for a store version from Amazon. So anyways, what you doing? Turn around there. There you go. Okay, so uh, I'll put the link for that one above here. And so it'll be on the screen. So it, once again, you won't be able to click on it, but you can, you know, I guess write it down. I'll, I'll put the shortest link I can make for it so that you can get to it. Uh, that's for the magnets. They come in uh, groups of 100. However, if you kind of plink around on the side a little bit, you can find smaller quantities. I would say if you're going to get into building larger scale things like this, you need at least 100 to get started. You will use them up on a board when you've got a massive uh, wing or anything like that where you're holding a whole bunch of pieces together. So, got to do that. Um, get as many as you feel comfortable with. You could start off with less, but you can always buy more uh, further down the line. When you get them, the, the magnets are just simply two plates with a magnet piece. God, it's weird, I put all that away too. Hang on. Okay, so this is one of the magnets right here. I believe the wor real world application of these is these are a uh, cabinet lock, latch lock. So in other words, uh, this would go on the inside door of a cabinet 
and uh, or the door sill actually and then the door would come up and it would have a small metal plate on it it would hit this and stop it so it's uh, nice because it's a magnet with a couple of plates in there that makes it really super strong when you go to put it on the metal if you have just the magnet by itself it's not so strong and maybe you'll have some soft wood or something like that that you don't want to be smashing uh, by accident with a uh, massive pull of the magnet or anything like that. Massive. Isn't that a cool word to use? It's massive. So anyhow, this is the magnet by itself. But when you put a plate on either side of it like this, it makes it like super strong hold to the metal surface through these two rails on either side. Uh, and you know, if you, you can, a lot of people will take and glue them together so that the plates are glued to the magnet. I don't like doing that because I like to be able to maybe slant it a little bit. So if you set it on the metal right now, you can actually tip it and have it lean a little bit, which can be used uh, if you've got like a piece of wood like this, and you want to say have it put a little bit of downforce pressure onto it, you can actually put it next to it and lean it toward it and it will actually hold that to the paper. So just an idea, that's why I don't tend to glue these. I, I glued my first set of them and I kind of regret it because uh, sometimes the magnet wasn't glued exactly perfect and you put it on the metal and it doesn't hold to a 90 degree angle. I would like it to have the potential of being a 90 degree angle. So anyways, that's the magnets, the link uh, I like put on the screen for you to go ahead and write down and get to if you want to. Um, next question that we get a lot of is um, where can you get the angles that go on the, jeez, I gotta go back over there again. Hold on. I'm back. How about that? Okay, the, the question I get uh, a lot of the time about the different stanchions that go on the magnets. So for instance, this is just a standard plywood right angle. Uh, these I got from Bob Holman Plans and uh, they kind of came in a kit of, of weird sizes. Now Bob's got a website that I'm giving you the listing for right there. I'll also give you the phone number. You'll probably have more success getting what you want from him if you just give him a call and, and talk to him and tell him what you're looking for because these were just a bunch of angles that he had made. He's made different wooden parts for all kinds of uh, jigs and other types of um, apparatus for building. So. Uh, these were the, I think that's a seven inch and this is a three inch angle. He's also got a five inch I think that you can get. That doesn't look like seven, that looks like five. Maybe that's a five. Maybe I didn't need the seven because I never thought I'd be building something quite that big. Huh, there's a mistake. Never say never. Uh, okay, and then the last one is this. This is uh, one that came from a uh, set, the Magic builder board set that was available back when I first got into using magnets. It was from a company named Lind Manufacturing out of Lake Havasu, Arizona. If you look on the web, I don't believe that they're still making these, but I think you could still find some of these kits out there somewhere. And this one here was one of the side stanchions. So like if you're putting a piece of fuselage up like so, you can have that to hold it to a 90 degree angle like that. And it works pretty well. Um, not the highest quality piece of uh, workmanship here. And, and the other thing is it's only got one magnet. And I'll tell you what, this thing shifts on that magnet quite a bit. So you have to check yourself that it's truly still at 90 when you're using it as a 90. You can, like I said, you could probably find these out there. They come with a small piece of sheet metal and a bunch of the magnets. And of course these things and some uh, presses. Now presses, I have never been impressed with. Never never been impressed with the presses because when it gets to a point as it, it, the press had two magnets on it and then it had a like a, an arm that hung over and a just a screw that you would tighten down and it would push down on the surface. What you would find is, is like there's never enough pressure to squish that spar or a uh, piece of wood down flat. And what happens is you start twisting it and pretty soon it pops the front magnet up and it wouldn't work correctly. So, I, you know, if you're gonna find parts, I think you're almost better off to go ahead and build yourself your own uh, tools or your own uh, supports and things like that, figuring what you're gonna need. is gonna be primarily maybe right angles and then actually the magnets themselves to hold the parts in place to the lines on the plan. 
those are the most important parts, uh, most important uses that I've come across anyways. Um, there is another place and I will put the link for them. I can't remember, they're called Airfield. I think they're called Airfield Models where they actually make a kit, costs a little bit of money, but they supply everything. They supply the magnets, they supply the nuts and bolts that you use to hold it to stanchions. They also supply a bunch of different stanchions. They have different size kits. Like I said, kind of spendy, but really nice looking stuff. Um, so, and if any of you buy one of those, I kind of like to know what you thought of it because I've never bought one, but they always look really nice. And it sounds like it's a pretty high quality product. Um, and I'll put the link to their uh, site here as well, or at least maybe I already did. Huh. Okay, the next question I get was kind of a runoff of the question about the uh, plans, and that was where do you get them printed out at? Once again, going back to that, uh, Staples has large format printers, and uh, there's gonna be other copy houses out there. There used to be a place called Kinko's. I think they got bought out by FedEx or UPS. Check those kind of places where they do those kind of office services, or any place that prints blueprints should be able to help you with that. Uh, the last question I get is, where do I get the wood that I'm building with? Um, in the past, I have used pretty much just uh, a place called National Balsa. They've always done really good for me as far as having the uh, proper types of wood that I need, uh, the quality that you get. It's like if you call them up and tell them you need this many sheets, you don't get the crummy sheets. They, they seem like they hand pick them pretty well. They do have um, other, what? Did you need something? You know, you're a little bit of a diva. Yeah. Okay. So uh, they do tend to have a uh, second or blemished wood. Oh, come on now, this is getting silly. What are you doing here? I know what I'm gonna do. Rather than sticking your butt toward everybody, why don't we put you down here? Okay. So they tend to have second or blemished wood, which is structurally perfect, but it might have like maybe a brown spot on it. Um, that wood works perfectly well and they tend to discount it down a little bit so you can get a good quality piece of wood that is, you know, no problem with it. You're going to paint over it or cover it anyway so nobody's going to see that it's got a spot or two on it. They have those kind of options. So National Balsa is one. Another supplier that I've got things through is a company named Balsa USA. Um, I've had moderate success with them and I've got a lot of friends who swear by them and all that kind of stuff. They say that they're great. Um, and I just, you know, I haven't bought a whole lot of wood through them. Another place that's really good is uh, SIG Balsa or SIG Enterprises. I'll find the correct link. They're the company that, the, the wood that they're selling is the wood that they use in their custom kits that they still sell. So that's, that's another option is SIG. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it. Most of the other, a lot of the balsa places have kind of disappeared uh, because of the ARF uh, industry has really taken off. So not as many people are building like we're doing with this one here, the scratch building of it. Um, the other thing is right now we're in a little bit of a crunch on balsa because I just found out that you know these wind generators that you see as you're driving across the country? Well, it, it turns out that those big 300 foot long blades have balsa uh, interiors on them. The, the skeleton of the shape of that propeller is supported by balsa. So the companies making them are buying up balsa left and right. That cuts into the supply that we have the ability to get to anymore and the prices have skyrocketed. So. Balsa is not as cheap as it, as it used to be. Uh, for instance, when I placed the order on this Ryan's Rebel, uh, I didn't need to order a whole lot of wood. I did need to order some uh, backup parts. I have a pretty good supply that I've had for years and years, and I was able to pull most of my stock from there. But I'd say probably half of the plane, or maybe, I don't know, maybe a third of the plane, I had to uh, outsource and find some more wood for. And it was expensive. Just the parts alone on what I bought, which didn't seem to me to be very many parts, uh, ran over a hundred dollars. And then there's also the ability to find certain things that just, you know, um, aren't available. If you look on the plans, 
the uh, designer of the Rebel says that you should be using a 3 8 by three inch long uh, aileron. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find anybody who's making a three inch long aileron stock. That means it's got a, a nice slope upward into it. Let me show you a piece. Okay, my flying buddy Mark gave me one of these here. This is, a, uh, is exactly what we're supposed to be looking at there. It's a uh, 3 8 by 3 inch piece of wood. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is, first of all, it's, uh, it's not a symmetrical angle. Now, looking back at it, I could have just shaped it a little bit different and I would have got the symmetrical uh, triangle uh, aileron, but for some reason I wasn't thinking at the time. And he actually gave these to me after, after I had ordered the parts that I had settled on. What I settled on was they did have a two and three quarter inch piece. And so what I did was I took two three eighths by uh, two and three quarters, which, okay, so I'm shortening up this aileron, which is a full strip aileron, but I'm only shortening it up by one quarter of an inch over the entire span. This is still going to give plenty of authority as far as an aileron goes. It's not gonna take much uh, deflection to get that wing banked, uh, even though the aileron is just slightly shorter than the design called for. So what I did was I took two of those, glued them together, and made this uh, symmetrical work here. So this is what I'm gonna be using for the ailerons on this plane, and uh, laminated them two together. It's nice and strong, not too terribly heavy, uh, but those are gonna be the ailerons on the ship. I'll go ahead and let you go now. Um, those are the top five questions that we have and thanks for tuning in again and thanks for, you know, tell your friends if they are interested in model airplanes that this is a place to be and let's get some more subscribers. I would love to have more people to talk to and, uh, about these model airplanes and uh, we're getting close to Christmas time. Shop out here. How cold is it out here, Kitty? She doesn't know. She's covered with fur. <laughs> Now, it's getting pretty cold outside. We've had snow and ice so far, so building season is upon us. I'm getting real close to uh, getting, the, getting going on the covering on the Rebel, and then we'll start building the internal pieces. But I also have some other airplanes that I want to introduce that, I've been, that I'm partially uh, underway on, and there's, I just want to get a whole fleet of airplanes working here before the spring comes. So anyways, until next time, have a Merry Christmas, and uh, I'll catch you back here again.